Hi, my name is Agatha. Welcome in Agatha's Cottage. It's time for Hashtag Friday Sews. As you know, this hashtag was started by Jen from today in Jen's Sewing Room. Every week you can watch loads of vlogs under Hashtag Friday Sews. Today I have a very special edition of my Friday Sews. I'm doing collaboration with Rachel from The French Seams. As you know, Rachel is fabulous sewist. She makes the most amazing outfits for frog tails. She makes beautiful dresses and recently she made some jeans for herself, which looks spot on. She, re she started doing quilts uh, not so long ago and she is going like a storm. So I hope if you haven't seen her, you will go check her out. So a few weeks ago, or oh actually it would be a month, uh, I, there was a sale on Sinclair patterns and um, I posted to our little WhatsApp group one of the patterns that I really liked, Alba Jacket by Sinclair Patterns. And Rachel said, oh, it's fabulous. And I was like, yeah, I really want to make it. But you know me, I will sew for everyone else rather than for myself unless I'm against a deadline or something like collaboration. Otherwise, I will pick makes for others over makes for myself. It's just in my nature. So um, Rachel said, I think I'm going to get it. And I said, you know, I'll probably get it as well. So let's make a collab. So we decided to make, uh, to both make this jacket and to collaborate. And we both had fantastic time. Let's start with my review of Alba Jacket. Of course, as any make for me, that's a little bit more complicated than a t-shirt, although I do have adventures with t-shirts, they were problems and they were all my fault, maybe with one or two exceptions, but majority of them were my fault. So uh, Alba Jacket, that's the jacket, I will pull put the line drawings on the screen so you can see them better. So it's asymmetrical zip up knit jacket that comes in US sizes zero to size 30. It's not a basic jacket. It's a little bit more complicated. I will show you my jacket. So the jacket zips up, up to here and it has this asymmetrical um, zip. When you open it, you have facing here, you have a bottom part of the jacket here, and you have facing here. So there is a lot of individual pattern pieces to this jacket. And that was the part of the difficulties I had. It's not a beginner friendly patterns. It's not even advanced beginner. Although instructions do hold your hand in many places, um, I do think you do need a bit more experience to actually attempt this jacket, but it's definitely worth it. Don't get me wrong, there were days um, when I was sewing this jacket when I wanted to scream. Actually, a few times there were situations when I was making very unruly noises and um, my husband was just looking at me with this... Um, surprise and a curious look on his face. I think I was a little bit like a sociopath. Don't get me wrong, it was worth it. I absolutely love my new jacket. It's super cozy, super warm, and it has this elevated look that can be worn as a kind of smart jacket. So it's not your everyday zipped jacket. A little bit about the fabric and then I will go into the construction. So I use a brushed French terry from Ecobe. I had roughly meter 70, meter 80 of this fabric and I used the majority of it. And for the cuffs, uh, for the lining of the uh, cowl neck and for the bottom band, I used a knit from my stash. Um, it's not anything fancy than it, but it has a little bit of shine 
add to it i'm not sure if you can see um and i thought that it will go well with the white or like almost white flowers on the uh, print i did not attempt to pattern match this fabric uh, although relatively it should be easy because i wasn't sure how everything will look like with all the various seam allowances etc so um, as i mentioned the uh, brush french terry is from ecobee i don't think that they have any left because i had it in my stash roughly three years at least two and the uh, knit with the little bit of sparkle i got it in poland a few years ago and that i use remnants uh, from uh, that was chapman cardigan for alice i made for world book day i think it would be two years ago so she went as a uh, alice in wonderland she needed something to go over so i made her cardigan uh, so i had some of it left so i use it for a cowl neck and for the cuffs and the band. Um, it wasn't the smartest choice of the fabric in that regard. I do think that the instructions should mention that a uh, fabric like ribbonet, like for example, cuffing or um, ribbing would be more suitable for this um, part of the pattern because I had to stretch it a lot. It had 20% stretch as per recommendation of the pattern. However, it does seem, seems like it's not stretchy enough. I had to really push it to stretch, uh, especially around the cuffs when I was adding them to the sleeves. Let's talk about my adventures with the pattern or actually making it. So first important information, and you will understand in a minute why. This pattern comes in three heights variants. So it's drafted for petite, for regular and for tall person. So I fell in into average size. I'm 167 and a half centimeters. So that's roughly five foot six. So it's on a spot for me. I did size 16 based on my bust measurement and it fits perfectly. It fits nicely around the hips. It's okay around the waist shoulders are just perfection so i'm extremely happy with the fit it's not as uh, oversized as i saw on some of the tester pictures uh, but i'm i'm very happy overall happy with the with the fit so the uh, pattern comes with something like memo card so you have your line drawing you have information about the fabric and the notions and you have option for the notes and I do like that overview because it makes your life easier. Although, in my case, it made my life difficult, mainly because of the way how the notions are listed. Um, it's not a critical point or anything. Um, back in my office working days, one of the things I used to do was dealing with clients' data and it was my job to find things that can be done better, that can be clearer and things that can cause problems. And that's one of the things that basically points out at me. Whenever I'm dealing with new pattern or new pattern company or any kind of instructions, it's my nature to look for things that should be done better for the end user, call it like that. Anyway, um, I do believe if there will be bullet points with specific um, height, so for example, petite, regular, tall, and then notion outlined underneath, that would be beneficial. But Alba is one of the old patterns, so I'm not sure how it's done now. I haven't checked uh, any of the new patterns, although I do have a few of them, but they aren't in my immediate plans so i didn't even look for the into instructions anyway so on the printout um you have let me see if i can show you here so you have here information for the 
zipper and there's petite for the size 0 to 16, regular 0 to 16 and tall 0 to 16. And what I did, um, I look at the wrong uh, size of the zipper. And that caused so much frustration. So I looked at the size zipper and I decided I need zipper length six, uh, 66 centimeters. So I checked my stash. I didn't have any. I had size 70. So I thought, you know, I might shorten it. But I thought I will give it a chance. I will um, contact my local shop that's within 20 minutes driving distance. Maybe they have the zipper that I need. They didn't. So I thought for a minute I might order something quickly on Amazon. But one zipper was something like 8 euro. And I decided 8 euro for a zipper is definitely too much. Especially that it wasn't any fancy zipper. It was just cheap budget brand. So I thought, okay, I'm going to install the longer zipper and I'm going to shorten it. And I'm going to install it first as much as I can and then I will just shorten the last two or three inches. So I attached the 70 centimeters zipper thinking okay I will have four centimeters spare sticking. They weren't four centimeters there was a lot there was like this piece sticking up. So I thought okay I did something wrong so I unpicked the zipper put all the pattern pieces again on my um, pattern pieces like paper pattern pieces on my fabrics the one that I cut out I checked that everything is where it's supposed to be so I started again I attached the zipper again and it is again it's sticking out so much so I thought okay there is something wrong so I went through everything except for checking the zipper length when I was mark writing down what zipper I need my hand slipped like basically so you have 61 centimeters for size uh, for regular length and you have 66 centimeters for a tall person so silly me i spent whole afternoon fighting with the zipper because i wrote the wrong number i should look for 61 centimeters zip instead of 66. i had like 60 and a half centimeter zip in my stash so I decided I will go with it and I will just have a slightly bit bigger gap here it worked fine uh, no problem there whatsoever I did have a tiny little problem I will pop the picture here so when you are sewing this pattern especially when you are using contrasting fabric for the bottom band and the bodice you need to be extremely precise with the seam allowances because on one side my fabric slipped and I use slightly bigger seam allowance on the other side I use slightly smaller seam allowance and I had a discrepancy in my bands and that would drive me insane so I had to unpick the zipper on both sides luckily not all the way just a little bit and on one side i had to take bigger seam allowance on the other i had to take tiny bit smaller seam allowance and they are almost perfect but i'm happy i took my time to get it sorted um next thing that i actually have to admit was driving me insane in this pattern are different seam allowances for different steps don't get me wrong pattern pieces did have all information marked on which for example the main seam allowance was seven millimeters so a quarter of an inch and then there was another seam allowance that was three eighths of an inch to be honest i would prefer either way to have either quarter of an inch everywhere or three eighths of an inch everywhere because going back and checking was driving me insane and um, i don't tend to go back to instructions a lot when i'm sewing i like to read the instructions roughly know what i need to do and if i get stuck then go back to instructions in this case i was actually reading instructions step by step overall 
instructions were good. Uh, there were a little information missing, like what width should be interfacing for doing the pocket lining. It was stated everywhere else what the interfacing width should be, but not for the pocket lining, or at least I haven't seen it. Um, I used two and a, like one inch, so two and a half centimeters, uh, and I think it worked fine. Uh, there is a lot of bulk seams in this uh, make. Um, I have to admit that uh, even my singer Heavy Duty was struggling at some moments with the top stitching and stuff like that. But overall, it's very pleasant make, extremely frustrating if you are not really careful about reading instructions. There is one thing that made me bamboozled, basically. I will show you the pattern pieces. So for the bodice, uh, for the facing of the bodice, the bottom part of the bodice and the lining part, the, those ones are the pattern pieces. And they have those little square thingies coming out. And those square thingies are very similar in the opening to the pocket opening. To be honest, when I was cutting out the pattern pieces, I was trying to rub my head before I read the instructions. Why, how, where you will stick the pocket with those pattern pieces? Because it looked like, you know, they go together. Turn out, they are just very big notches, like something to uh, recognize what pattern piece it is. To be honest, I would prefer information, okay, put yourself a note on this pattern piece, that's that pattern piece number six, this pattern piece is number three, this is number five. That would be easier, in my opinion, than doing those notches because you need to cut them off before sewing and if you get disturbed, um, you might end up having a problem which pattern piece is what because they are very similar. Anyway, that's a minor thing. Overall, I absolutely love this jacket. Chris is laughing that his OCD is tricked by an um, asymmetric zipper, but when I'm wearing it zipped up to my bust line is uh, not that bad, so he's fine with that. I'm already considering another one, uh, this time in stretch leather, but I do need to check whatever the leather I'm planning to buy has enough stretch for it and I just want to finish it with something cozy on the inside. I will take the jacket off and I will see, I will show you the uh, insides. So starting with the collar. So collar has fabulous three pleats that give it this extra elevated look. Uh, the bottom of the collar doesn't have pleats. The pleats are going up. Uh, I personally think that there should be more information in the instructions about the direction of the fabric when you are doing the pleats to make them go the right way when your fabric is directional. Um, but otherwise it was fine. You have little shoulder yoke on both uh, shoulders. Uh, there is an option in the instructions to do the zipper opposite side, so not going left to right, going right to left. Then in the collar you have then a neckline, it's binded with the bias binding. Uh, I used a label by Specky Seamstress, it says made with love and mistakes. Um, personally, I do think we could use woven bias binding easily here. Um, but I went with what the instructions were suggesting um, and I actually slightly trimmed it because it was too big and I hand stitched it uh, so there's no visible seam at the back. Then you have this uh, part here is finished with the woven bias binding and I added a label I had in my stash. Um, I did use woven bias binding instead of the overlocking or the bias by the jersey bias binding suggested in the pattern. I just wanted something cute and I love those strawberry uh, bias binding from Specky Seamstress. What else? Um, 
you have this so there's inside of the jacket you have all the seams finished and nothing is visible i hand stitched the uh, bottom band uh, because basically you are doing this as one of the last steps so i hand stitch it to the bodice so it's not visible and i actually love the way it turned out uh, pockets are attached on the bottom uh, to the um to the band and they are covered basically with the bottom part of the band so there's no open seams on the bottom part of the pocket i used a label i got from my dear friend mari that says uh, so sociopath because basically i was feeling a little bit at this as a sociopath in some moments when i was making this jacket overall construction of this jacket is not easy it does require focus it requires to checking the instructions regularly and following them to the letter if you go and do some things ahead of time you might regret them so it's important to follow the steps but i do think it's absolutely worth the extra time i spend on it i'm very excited to see what rachel's jacket looks like we haven't shared sneak peeks with each other we were just uh, talking a little bit about the instructions and about fabrics and the zippers so i cannot wait to hear what she thought about this pattern now that was my makes all my makes for this week because i haven't made anything else i have to admit this jacket took way longer than i anticipated and partially because of my silly mistake with a zipper i do have few things that are work in progress i haven't finished any of my whips for finish that whip challenge i haven't finished any of my upcycles uh, their works in progress so they will be finished within month of november maybe december but unfortunately they do need to wait as it's a friday so we cannot go without talking about potential things we bought so i bought myself a tiny bit of fabric only one actually i bought two but the other one is the same that i already have in my stash it's a remnant so i'm not counting it so i got myself this fabulous viscose 100 percent viscose from so so in an ace with those amazing zebras so i got meter and a half and i'm planning some kind of uh, oversized shirt with it uh, probably something for spring so i'm not in a rush to make it anytime soon but i absolutely loved the fabric and when i popped in to you know check the um zipper situation of course i had to buy some fabric it would be rude not to my plans for next week are all focused about sewing gifts and sewing for knitting and stitching show so alice and i are going to knitting and stitching show next weekend and i just want to make some uh, wash bags for her and for me or makeup bags and uh, my a gift to november video is coming up on monday the 4th so i hope you will tune in i hope you enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching i cannot wait to see what rachel made with her jacket and how she finds the pattern i hope you will stick around for future videos don't forget clean your sewing machine and change your needle happy sewing Bye.